Want to unlock new opportunities like converting more customers, reducing reliance on physical prototypes, and opening up for employee training? Interactive 3D configurators are redefining customer engagement, and your valuable CAD models can be transformed into these engaging experiences. The Unity Industry Toolset provides all the tools you need to connect your data, create immersive experiences, and deploy a production-ready app on any relevant platform that can easily be repurposed. Today, I'll show you how to build your first working product configurator in just 45 minutes using Unity's Industry Product Configurator Package. Let's start by exploring the sample project. First, create a new Universal Render Pipeline project through the Unity Hub, and then head to the GitHub repository, download it, and get it running in Unity. Once you have the sample open and running, you'll see how the system works. Notice how clicking buttons instantly changes materials between different colors across various parts of the model. The camera seamlessly transitions to showcase each variant from the optimal viewing angle using Unity's Cinemachine system, and these camera angles can be controlled directly through the UI, letting users explore the product from every perspective. Take a moment to explore the hierarchy structure and understand the components used for making the various variants. Remember, this is an open source package, and you can extend or customize any function you want to fit your use case. To get started with your own model, create a new scene in the project and add a 3D model to it. For this video, I'll use the model that comes with the package, but you can use almost any 3D format you'd like. For converting your 3D model, use the Asset Transformer plugin which handles various CAD file formats and provides advanced optimization features. Another option is to upload your model to Unity Cloud Asset Manager and use the Optimize and Convert feature. This is an easy tool to optimize and convert your model into Unity-ready formats. Now for the core feature, real-time material switching. Right-click in the hierarchy, navigate to Product Configurator, Variant Set, and select Material Variant Set. Create a new variant set and start by automatically finding all mesh renderers using your target material across complex object hierarchies. Let's locate two different materials with metallic finishes. The sample contains red metal and blue metal materials. Now assign these materials to each variant slot by selecting them in the variant fields. The system handles all the switching logic automatically. Let's test this immediately using the preview slider in the inspector. Perfect. With material variants working, we need an interface for users to control these configurations. We'll use Unity's UI system. We will start by creating a panel which will automatically generate a canvas and an event system as well. We will then add a button. Let's name this button Red Metal Button and position it appropriately in the game view. Use a horizontal or vertical layout group to ensure consistent button spacing. It's also important to set the canvas to scale with screen size using a 1920 by 1080 reference resolution and a match value of 0.5 for balanced UI scaling. To connect the logic, select your button. In the inspector, add a variant select component. Determine the desired action for this component. Next, find the on-click section and click the plus icon to add a new event. Drag your variant select component into the object field. From the drop-down menu, choose variant select and then select variant. This directly links your button to the material switching system. Now, repeat this process to create additional buttons for other materials, such as blue metal. Now let's test in play mode. Clicking red metal should change your model to red, blue metal to blue. Excellent! You can see smooth, instant material switching with no code required. Let's add professional camera controls using Cinemachine. Go to the Package Manager and ensure the Cinemachine package is installed, otherwise install it. Now go to Game Object, Cinemachine, 
and create a Cinemachine camera. Position this camera to show your product from a desired angle, perhaps a close-up view that highlights the material changes. One tip here is to use Align with View for a starting point using Ctrl-Shift-F on Windows or Command-Shift-F on Mac. From this position, it's easier to find your desired angle. Add two to three cameras and the Cinemachine Brain handles all smooth blending between cameras automatically in runtime. In the Cinemachine camera component, use the solo button to test your different view. To keep your hierarchy organized, create an empty game object to parent your cameras and give them meaningful names. In order to activate the views, again use the UI buttons. You can copy and paste the ones from the material variant and now call them cameras. For the on-click event, drag the camera you want to control and use the prioritize option. This will set the priority to highest and therefore this virtual camera will be the active camera. In order to make everything work, we need to add a target to our free look camera. This camera lets you control the view with the mouse when clicking the right mouse button. Also add the assets player slash look under standard UI action from the configurator package. This will define custom UI actions so the view only moves when pressing the button. Now we are ready to test our configurator. Press play and test the various views. Super! Now that we've built our product configurator, let's deploy it to the web so users can access it from any browser. To build for WebGL, we'll use Unity's Build Profiles. Navigate to File, then Build Profiles. In the Build Profiles window, select Web as your target platform from the left panel. Make sure your configurator scene is present in the scene list and remove any other scenes you don't need for the final build. After switching to the WebGL platform, let's optimize our player settings for web deployment. Go to Edit, then Project Settings, and select Player. Click on the Web tab to access web-specific settings. In the Publishing Settings section, I recommend setting the compression format to Broadly. This will give you smaller file sizes and faster loading times. For more information on setup options, check Unity's Web Player Settings documentation. Once everything is ready, click Build and Run. Unity will generate a folder with everything needed to launch your configurator in a web browser. If you only click Build, you'll need to host the output on a local or remote web server. The browser will open automatically and you should see your build running smoothly. You're live! Mission accomplished!